Hi guys, welcome back. I've um, uploaded this reptile tank to the Etsy shop and a lot of you really, really like this. Since then, I've made a few other ones and um, the tutorials for these will be coming soon. And um, just kind of see, and everything has working doors and stuff. So that's what those, those will be coming soon. But in the meantime, I wanna show you how to do this kit. This is another kit that's a reptile tank and this is a super easy kit to do. Um, you're gonna have your fake reptiles that you'll have to paint to look like this or however you wanna make it look like because this is what it'll look like before it's painted and that'll look like that one if you paint it those colors. Okay, this is supposed to be a fake rock. You can always just get a regular rock. Um, this is supposed to be a bowl. When you glue it down, you won't ever see it, that it wasn't. And then this is the trim for the face. These are the interior pieces. You have the top, or the sides, I'm sorry, these are the sides. This is the top, and then this is the face, and then this is the back. And then this piece here, a lot of people think that this is wood because it's got the laser burnt edges, but it's not. It's actually the acrylic. So what you do is you pull the protective coating off because it'll come shipped like that. And you would just peel that right off very easily. Don't use anything sharp, just use your fingers. And then as you can see, you have a clear piece of plexiglass that'll be in the kit for the very first step we're gonna take these center pieces here and we're gonna glue them to the back piece so you're gonna put some glue right along this edge here and then you're gonna do a little bit right here and a little bit right here I'm using crazy glue because it holds rather quickly for me um, you can use wood glue and then wait it out. Okay, it should just go right in there. If you don't have a square tool, you can square it up using one of the other pieces. Just be careful not to get glue on your corners right here because otherwise it'll ruin it for the rest of the project. Okay, you're going to repeat that process and do the next step. I try to make my kits super easy for you guys so that you can build and you know, have furniture that's relatively affordable and pretty simple to put together. Alright, so then that's in there. And that'll be what the back will look like. Now we have the pattern of the wood facing forward. That way when you're looking in the bottom from the front side, you can see that wood grain pattern because it's MDF and it's only printed on one side. All right. Now, the next step is you're gonna put this one to the front and it's gonna glue right in there and right in there like that. So you're gonna repeat that process with the glue and then glue that. But you also wanna make sure before you glue it that you have this lined up to where your pieces are straight because when you go to put this one you don't want to have it wonky so you definitely want to make sure that that is going to be straight to where the bottom is the bottom and the top is the top again you're going to put some glue right along this edge on the bottom I'm not going to put it on the top on this one because I don't want it to show through um, on the top of this piece but you can put it on the top of this one and then that glues like that All right, now the next step is you're gonna be gluing your side panels on. So you're gonna run some glue right along this edge here. If you use wood glue, you will actually have a little bit more playtime. 
I'm not using wood glue because I want to do the video now and not a half an hour from now. So I glue that on there and then I'm going to stand it up on a flat surface and I'm going to make sure everything is flat. You can push your board down on there and just kind of make sure everything is flat and hold it there so it sets up. And then your bottom should be even and your top should be even. You flip it over like that, you shouldn't have any issues. All right, now you're gonna do the same thing for this side. Okay, and when you go to put the top on, everything should line up like that. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. You can paint this if you want now or you can keep it this color. I'm gonna keep it this color just because I like the wood look, um, but you can do whatever you want. You can paint it black, gray, white, whatever color, you know, floats your boat. Um, at this point, you need to decide if you're gonna paint it because if you're not gonna paint it, then you can move on. If you're gonna paint it, you need to paint it before you put this plexiglass on the inside, otherwise you're gonna be painting around it. And um, that might, cause a problem for getting paint on the glass all right now this piece here you're gonna glue this is the bottom face trim you're gonna line it up with what's there and you're gonna glue it right on there and I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna kind of dab it on here and then rub it in Once I've done that, I'm going to line this up very carefully with the bottom to make sure it's even. And if you're using crazy glue, you got to make sure you get it right the first time. And then it should look like that. should offset this piece here because most face boards come out on the front. All right, now this piece here will get glued on right there. And you're gonna, again, this time I'm gonna put glue on here and then we're gonna glue it in place. I'm not gonna do a lot of glue because I don't really want it to ooze out on me. In fact, I'm gonna take some of this glue and I'm gonna very quickly dab it off of here before I do it. I'm making sure I line it up and I'm gonna put it right there. Now you can obviously use a ruler or something to line it up. I just eyeballed it. But that's basically what that will look like. Now for the plexiglass, you are going to put it in here, right like that. But what you need to do is look at the inside and you're going to put a very thin layer don't get excessive because if you do it's going to come out on the crazy glue put a very tiny I mean it's going to come out on the glass put a very tiny bit of glue this isn't going to hold water or anything so you don't really need to go crazy and just kind of do a little bit of glue right along that edge okay very little if you do a lot then what's gonna happen is it's gonna come through and hopefully I didn't do too much but then you're gonna slide that in there put the bottom in first and then press the top and that's all you have to do for that now if you're going to add sand and you don't want the sand to move you see how my sand doesn't well some of it falls out because I put sand on top of it a little bit when I redid it but now that that top piece just fell out like none of the sand is coming out. If you want that effect and you don't want the sand to go anywhere, you need to get yourself some school glue and a little bowl and you need to mix the sand with the school glue together or you can also use Mod Podge Matte. Either one of those will work. The school glue is going to be a lot cheaper um, if you're gonna take and do the sand and you want the sand to stay still. Now you can take your snakes and you can keep them like this 
or you can sand them using a sandpaper or a Dremel and you can sand the edges round to get them a little bit um, rounder at the edges to where they look flatter um, or not flatter but like more rounded along those edges like a snake might have and you just kind of go this is like a very thin piece and just kind of go around it a little bit you don't have to do a whole lot just a little bit The face is where you probably want to concentrate the most at because that's where it's going to end up being a little bit more. Don't do it too harsh because you don't want to snap your snake in half. But that's one way to get the roundness going on your snake. Or if you don't want to do that, you can use a little box knife. And if you're using a box knife, you're going to have to be very careful not to cut yourself. Um, and you would just kind of go along the edge. And you would just take some off. To make it look a little bit more authentic. Like to have the little bumps in it that a snake would have if it just ate a meal. Or you could just paint it and leave it as is. Either way would work, but you have to be very careful when you do this not to cut yourself and not to take too much off because you can't put it back and don't cut or break the tail because it gets thin down here. And it just basically takes that little edge off. I don't know if you can buy fake snakes anywhere this size for the 112th, um, but I do know that there are a few places that you go to like museums and um, zoos and stuff like that that will sell little baby lizards. Because I did buy um, a baby lizard somewhere when we were in another state at a aquarium, if you can see him in there. I don't know if you can really see him. But I found him and I thought he was super cute and he was just the right size for this so I bought him. He was a little expensive, I'm not going to lie. I think he was like five bucks for that little tiny thing or something like that. But um, it's been a while since I got him and I was just like, he was so worth the money. But you can find them. I think they're made by like LTS or something like that. I can't remember exactly. If I can find it, I'll leave the link below. But anyway, I'm going to do this to the snake and then I'll be right back. Okay, once you have it like shaped the way you want it, then you can just kind of sand any rough edges, hold it flat when you're doing it, and then just go over very lightly on those edges. And then there's what you'll have. Make sure you just hold it flat and firm while you're doing it. And the more time you put into the snake, the more realistic it's going to look for you. But if you're not worried about it looking too realistic, you can just kind of do that because I mean at a glance he kind of looks real. If you notice, he's starting to get round a little bit. All right, and then that's what you got. Now, you can paint him. Um, you can 
use a black sharpie to get your black going if you want which is probably the easiest way to get it done without having to worry about all that excess paint that's how I like to paint them because it's quick Um, this is actually not a Sharpie that I'm using, but it works just as good. It's one of those giant Crayola project markers. Um, that snake I did with a Sharpie, but this one, since I'm not digging in the drawer looking for it, I'm going to use the project marker. Target sells them, Amazon sells them, I don't know where else, but pretty much everywhere I would imagine. That sells kid markers or project markers. Office Depot, Home Depot. May, uh, Home Depot probably doesn't sell them. But there's what he looks like there. And he kind of looks more rounded now that I've sanded him compared to this one, if you can see. I'll paint him so you can kind of get an idea. The difference. I mean, and some snakes are more boxy anyway, so that's fine. But if you can see the difference in the two, now that they're there. Now you can just go back with some markers and color him whatever spots you want. So for me, I'm just going to start out with um, these metallic pens. It's pretty much dry. And I'm just going to kind of hit a couple little spots on the snake. Give them a little bit of color variant. Um, maybe a little bit of contourness like around the face here. If you don't like it, take the black marker and go back over it. And you don't need the bottom unless you plan on having them climb up the glass. And it kind of looks like that. You can add a little bit more, a little bit less. Just play around with the colors the way that you want to do it. And then um, make it the way you want. Look at some snakes online. And then um, decide from there. Now as far as like the sand goes, um, again, you can mix that. Take the sand, mix it with some glue. You just need some school glue for it or Mod Podge. Either one works. It's a little bit tedious getting it mixed in because it wants to clump. But if you just keep being diligent about it, eventually you'll get like a pasty kind of sand. I don't recommend washing this down your sink or anything like that so definitely want to avoid doing that just keep mushing it together
Okay, and it should look like this, kind of very, very pasty. Now, you wanna take this and you wanna put it in here. Try to keep it off of the glass until you have it where you want it. Once you get it pretty much in there, what I like to do is I like to take my finger and just kind of mush it where I want it to go and I'm pressing down as I'm going. If you keep your finger wet, it actually won't stick to your finger like it is here. Avoid getting it on the glass like I just did. And you can do more or less wherever it is that you want it to go. Okay, so let me turn it this way so the light can kind of shine through. I wet my finger and I kind of pushed it where I wanted it to go. And I filled in all of those little corners very neatly. Now again, this is only if you don't want the sand to move. You're gonna let that dry, and then there's what you'll have so far. The back will dry and all too as well. Um, at this point, if you wanna add anything in, like if you have greenery or anything like that that you wanna add in, this would be when you would wanna do that. Because if you don't add it in now, you won't be able to have it in here. Because it, well, I mean, I guess you technically could have it in there, but it's not going to look as nicely because you're not going to be able to get it where you need it to go. So, like, here's like a little greenery. If I wanted to add this in, I could push this down into that and it'll just stay there because the sand is covering it and the glue is covering it. You can add more or less or whatever you want. Kind of like this has got a massive amount of greenery inside here. So most of this stuff I found at Hobby Lobby and there's a whole tutorial on, um, or not tutorial, but like a whole thing where I'm walking through Hobby Lobby doing that um, and showing you the different things that you can use. All right, so this is your fake rock. You wanna go ahead and just kinda do whatever you want with this, sand it, put it in there while it's wet. All that water will dry up. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm actually going into the edges of this and I'm gonna like take off some off the top. Very carefully not to cut my hand by the way. See how I have that underneath of there? And I'm using some force. So you have to be careful if you're gonna do this because if the blade slips, you will get your hand. Maybe wear like one of those little thimbles that you use for sewing if you plan on doing this. That way you don't end up getting it. But I want it to be rough because rocks are rough. Take your knife or whatever and just kind of poke at it give yourself some really rough edges or you can just go get a rock out of your yard and glue it in there it don't really matter I just tried to make it to where you had everything you needed to make this it'll come with the fake um, rock the fake two snakes and the fake bowl and the sand and uh, the greenery, that one little strip you'll get with it as well, as long as I still have it here. 
you know, I can't promise you I can include the greenery with it just because I don't know that I'll ever find that exact piece again. I bought that like a year ago. But there's what I have for the rock. Now you can paint that the same way you did the other stuff. You can do some dry brushing with some acrylic paint as well to get in those little areas. Or you can just leave it where the brown shows through. It's completely up to you how you want to do your little rock. But now this rock went from being a flat piece to having texture to it. And I don't know if you can really see that in the video. But I'll try to hold it up so you can. See the back is flat. And now the front has some texture to it just by doing that. Sorry about the focus. Okay, so then there's that and then you can add different colors if you want to just kind of go over it. I like using the markers for the small stuff because it goes a lot quicker and it automatically dries it. You don't really have to worry about the whole painting it thing and waiting for it to dry and then getting globs and dry brushing and going back and forth. This makes it a lot easier. I'm just hitting some areas of it and then I'll go back over it again with that black. So it kind of looks like a rock to me. I mean, I don't think the camera is picking it up. Um, but again, like the more detail you add to it, the better it's going to look. But for me, it looks like a little rock. All right, now I'm going to just put a little bit of crazy glue on the back of this. Um, in here, let me see where I'm going to put my little snake right there. Yeah. So I'm just going to put a dab of crazy glue on the back. And then I'm going to put it down in here. I mean, and it might not stick right away, but eventually it will. And if you think your snake is done at that point, you can go ahead and do more. I think I'm going to add a little bit more to the face to kind of give it that defined edge. I think that's a little bit better um, and then again you can do some crazy glue on the back of him you know or you can just do some wood glue and stick him in there and he'll also stick that way You can push him down in the sand a little bit if he's still, if it's still a little wet. Just don't push him too far because you don't want to lose your detail. Okay, now before you seal this up, you want to make sure you clean that glass off if you got anything on it. Okay, so once I have my glass done, what I'm going to do just to kind of help with the drying out process is I'm taking the tissue and I'm just blotting it on the sand to absorb any excess liquid that's sitting on the top. Alright. 
and your little bowl that you have you can just kind of press down in there somewhere I just use the marker to do the same exact thing if you don't want to see the sand under there you can always just put a drop of paint in there and then leave it like that All that is, let me turn it this way again so you get more light. All that is is black acrylic paint that I just put in there and it will dry. This stuff just came from Dollar Tree, but Walmart sells a brand. Hobby Lobby sells a brand. Pretty much everybody sells their own brand of paint. So you can just use whatever. And then if you want to add some little water in there, you can. Or some Mod Podge on top with gloss to make it look like it's water. You can do that as well. Now, I wouldn't use real water. I'd use like um, Woodland Scenic water. There's what you have. Now, I'm not going to glue this on top right now just because I want to have it air out and dry. But you would just apply the glue along this whole edge and then the back you would make flat against it like this and then you would line the sides up and then it would overhang on the front and on the right and on the left side just enough but that's where it is if you want it to add a light in there you could drill a little hole here and then add one of those little lights that look like these things make it up sorry it's stuck one of these little lights they sell them on Amazon as well and I'll kind of show you without putting it on there but basically that's what it would look like and in fact I will probably actually go back and put a little hole in this so that you guys don't have to drill it that way if you want to do the little light you can All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to leave a question, suggestion, or comment below. And I will see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, and if you have anything that you're thinking about or something that you want to do um, or you want me to do, leave it down there or fill it out on the form that's on my website under dollhousetutorials.com. Also, there's lots of free templates and stuff under the member only section. So if you sign up for a member, which is free, then you can also get some free templates as well. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.